when sir uh, day of tomorrow i think have the first two chapters coming in your exam now right yes sir just keep it right? yeah hasan assalam alaikum how are you okay Hasan, you also turn your camera on. Okay. Uh, good. So, uh, let us continue what we left in the previous class. We were learning about feeding and digestion in amoeba. Previously, we have already learned about different things. We learned about ruminants, uh, how digestion takes place in the case of cattle, different type of herbivores, and uh, also one more important thing we learned that herbivores have got a longer small intestine in them. The length of a small intestine in herbivores is comparatively longer as compared to other organisms. The reason being is, is that their diet is basically plant-based. They eat grasses and grasses contain lots of cellulose in them. And cellulose are kind of hard to digest for them also. But not as difficult as humans. So thereby the grasses or whatever leaves or whatever plant-based food they would be eating, it will be stored up in their small intestine for a longer period of time. Hence, it will be stored in a convenient manner. It will be stored better. Getting it, guys? So, Iman, your uh, video is on, but you are not visible. It's dark. Okay, there are a few questions I would like to ask. Uh, what is the total number of teeth in adult human? Sir, 32, right? 32, oh, correct. Sir. Okay. Do tell me, what are the secretions of stomach? Name the secretions of stomach which digest the food. Yes. Yeah, Suleiman. Sir, gastric juice. Ga yeah, we call them as gastric juices. What? But what are the name of those gastric juices? Hassan, I can't he hear you. Neither you are visible properly. Sir, hmm. See, Suleiman. Uh, Aman hasn't joined today. Neither Aman, neither Fatima. See, uh, in the chapter, in the chapter, we learned about. Um, the stomach that in the stomach like hydrochloric acid is secreted mm -hmm. we learned about mucus is secreted and pepsin is secreted these were the three secretions in the stomach can you recall that okay do tell me the next question to you is that name the simpler forms of carbohydrate fat and protein what are the simple forms Meaning that whenever you are eating the food, your food will contain carbohydrate, protein, and fat. They are digested in your body and they are broken down into the simpler uh, substances. Sir, fatty acids? No, no. Name it uh, in a sequence. Name it a proper manner. Like carbohydrates are converted into? Sir, amino acids? No, are... proteins are converted into amino acids, no? Yes. Okay, now fats are converted into fatty acids and glycerol. You are not, I believe you are not revising things properly. Right? So you are uh, having difficulty to recall it. See, as we learned that carbohydrate or starch will be converted into glucose. Proteins are converted into amino acids. Fats are converted into fatty acids and glycerol. Didn't we learn about that? Yes, sir. Okay, no? so we learned about this thing in the class. Make sure that you keep on revising different things. Otherwise, you will tend to forget everything. 
and a day after tomorrow you are having test and you have memorized things properly you haven't memorized it properly huh okay then do tell me okay by the way by the way there were a few other things also left to be discussed in the class like uh, normally it is advised that one should not eat uh, eat in a hurry uh, in a uh, hurried manner one should not hurry while eating why is it so hmm? why one should not hurry while eating first thing usually people would say that eating quickly would lead to poor digestion uh, and higher quantity of food require more efficient digestion and something which your body is not prepared for yes. one of the main reason is that you might develop hiccups you might develop hiccups while eating food what basically happen say you have taken a large meal you have taken large amount of meal and sometime uh, or like you get excited suddenly while eating food you get excited excited suddenly suddenly does that ever happen like you were eating food and you heard something and you got very excited and you developed hiccups uh, so we are going to learn about that also like why does that happen why hiccups happen but first of all let us complete um uh, let us first of all understand about this um, digestion in the case of amoeba okay. others have joined yes fatima assalam alaikum how are you yeah so we were going to learn about amoeba first of all you guys tell me that amoeba is unicellular or multicellular Sir, what? Amoeba is unicellular or multicellular? It's a unicellular organism. Okay, it will be found in pond water, lake water. Basically, it will be found in the dirty water, right? We learned about the structure of amoeba. First of all, you need to know about its structure. First thing is that it does not have a fixed shape. The shape is not fixed. it will keep on changing its shape then we learned about its structure that whenever uh, it has it has got a membrane membrane is basically the outermost boundary that covers the amoeba then there will be jelly like fluid jelly like fluid inside this amoeba which we were calling as cytoplasm in fact cytoplasm is found in our cells also then this dense the structure is called as nucleus so these are the things found in it apart from that we have vacuoles also vacuoles are kind of empty spaces found in it those empty spaces can be filled with food and can be filled with other substances also like it can be filled with water or some other things so whenever a prey will be near whenever a food particle will be near to this so it will form false leg like structures and thereby it will slowly start to engulf it and this food particle will go into the food vacuole inside it and inside the food vacuole what happens food vacuoles will release digestive enzymes it will release digestive juices and those digestive juices will break down this food getting it guys it will break it down and slowly it will absorb it and this food will be distributed inside the amoeba to various parts and whatever is undigested it will be secreted out the process that process the steps of nutrition in amoeba is as follows it is same as we learned in the case of humans first of all it takes the food ingestion how it ingests the food by forming false leg like a false uh, legs called as cirrhopodia then it will be digesting the food then it will be absorbing it assimilation will also take place and finally the waste will be excreted from the body so it's a unicellular organism that has the ability to change its shape they are usually found in water bodies like ponds lakes and slow moving rivers sometimes these unicellular organisms can go into the human body also and cause can cause various illness okay now the special thing about the amoeba is that they would be making temporary leg like structures called as cirrhopods or cirrhopodia Okay, no. So hope you guys are getting it. Then you have one more 
unicellular organism called as paramecium that is paramecium fatima read this read the paragraph paramecium nutrition paramecium paramecium are a unicellular eukaryotic organism they are cellular the hair like cells used for locomotion or cannabis parasitic have holozoic nutrition they engulf food from the surrounding environment they use coordinated movement of cilia to uh, divert the water and food into them so paramecians are unicellular eukaryotic organisms and if you were to look at the structure in this can you spot one thing that there are some hair like structures coming out of it if you look close enough you might just spot it might not be properly visible but there are some hair like structures coming out of this paramecium these hair like structures are called as cilia what do we call them as cilia cilia they are c i l i a So we were going to do that uh, question, right? Yes. We were going to do that. No, today we are going to do that to do the questions. Okay. So paramecium, these hair-like structures called the cilia, they help them in moving and also help them in engulfing the food. If there is a food in near to it, it will basically engulf it as a whole. Right now, so cilia helps them to move around. further it helps them in taking in the food also so it will basically eat this whole food just like we engulf the food they will also be engulfing the whole food so that is paramecium it's another unicellular eukaryotic organism there are few things which is uh, left to be discussed like we are going to learn about hiccups like why does hiccup happens in order to understand that let us take a diagram then it will be better okay now like you all might have uh, uh, talking about hiccups what basically happens while you are breathing in while you are breathing in air will go through the nasal passage it goes through the nasal passage okay now and epiglottis will be open epiglottis by the way it's a it's a uh, it's a gateway between your food pipe and your wind pipe epiglottis is a gateway it's kind of shut uh, doorway mechanism between the epiglottis and the food pipe If you were to look at the look at this structure, see, yeah, here there are two pipes running down your neck. One is the food pipe, that is esophagus. Okay, and that is the esophagus. Another pipe that runs down in your neck area and goes up to the lungs. That is wind pipe. Getting it? So there are two pipes. One is wind pipe and one is foot pipe. Both of them are side by to each other, next to each other. And there is a gateway between them. That that gateway is bit between them is called as epiglottis. Via another image, it will be much much clear. See, in the image, what you can observe here that see, this is this is your, uh huh. This is this is where the epiglottis is. This is where your epiglottis is. So epiglottis is basically 
kind of a gateway where uh, where it is acting as a gateway it is acting as a gateway between your esophagus and your windpipe you see that while you are breathing while you are inhaling the air at that time epiglottis will remain open it will remain open and the air sometimes you breathe through the mouth also no right now. so at that time epiglottis will remain open and via the mouth and via the nose air can enter into your windpipe okay so while you are breathing in epiglottis it remains open this will remain open and air can pass through it while you are eating the food while you are eating the food this will close this epiglottis will close and at that time the food will not go into the wind pipe but it will go to the food pipe are you guys getting it or not yes oh. but sometime what happens now while you while eating food or like say that you are eating the food and suddenly you might uh, experience hiccups like while having food or you are drinking something you get excited too much uh, or due to some medical issue also in some cases hiccups can occur so in most of the people although it usually lasts for a few minutes but let us understand why does it happen so in hiccup what will happen sometimes this epiglottis does not closes so thereby the food that you are eating the food particle will go into the wind pipe it will go into the wind pipe okay now so then immediately what will happen your diaphragm will become like this if you you guys know about diaphragm give me a moment Let's see in that case your diaphragm will basically contract it will contract i mean to say Look at this image here. Where is epiglottis? Over here. This is where the epiglottis is. Okay, now epiglottis is over here now. Okay. And this is this is basically the foot pipe and wind pipe close by together. Like wind pipe is not being shown here. Let me. Extend it further. This will be your wind pipe. That is the lung, and just beneath the lung, we have diaphragm. We have diaphragm. So diaphragm is a floor-like structure just beneath your lung. Whenever your foot particle will enter into the windpipe, if epiglottis does not closes, then foot pa foot particle will go into the uh, uh, windpipe. Then your then your diaphragm will contract. It will become like this. Then your diaphragm is going to contract. Diaphragm contracts. and thereby the food particle from this then it will go into the food pipe from the wind pipe it will go into the wind pipe i mean to say from the wind pipe it will go into the food pipe are you guys getting it fatima suleiman and hasan yes yeah basically like when you whenever you are doing normal breathing at that time you would observe that you won't be having like hiccups or like i mean to say that whenever you are eating something 
and you get too excited or while drinking something you are talking too much or due to some medical conditions also hiccup blockers in this basically food from the from the foot pipe foot was meant to go into the foot pipe but it will go into the wind pipe if epiglottis does not close it so it is like this there is a gateway mechanism like this that is your wind pipe and that is your foot pipe a foot particle which you have eaten was meant to go into the foot pipe but sometime it remains open so thereby guys what will happen it will go into this thereby it will go into this hope it is clear to everyone that is why it is say that do not eat your food in a hurried manner that is the thing okay then you guys answer one more question to me what are the three digestive glands in our body what are the three digestive glands in our body yeah suleiman fatima all of you by the way turn your camera on hasan and fatima sir salivary gland salivary glands yes, sir uh, liver salivary glands and okay answer sir, one by one sir is it uh, is it liver salivary glands and pancreatic glands and uh, glands yeah just one more salivary gland pancreatic gland and liver liver suleiman yes sir Are you answering the same? Yes, sir. Good. Okay, do tell me, is there any role of liver in digestion of fat? What? Question is, is there any role of liver in digestion of fat? Oh uh, yes, sir. Bile juice, right? Yeah, right now. So liver produces bile juice, and bile juice breaks down fat. and breakdown of fat will also produce energy no yes okay and your liver will produce around 800 to 1 ml of 1 uh, ml of bile per day is produced around 1 ml of bile is produced per day okay then answer one more question that uh, uh like if i were to ask you about the uh, starfish what is the mode of Food intake in the starfish. How do they take in food? Sir, it opens its stomach and it sucks the uh, like the fish. Correct. Basically, they will take out take out their mouth, take out their stomach from their mouth, and then engulf the soft part of the um, uh, prey. Okay. Do tell me what you guys understand about oral rehydration solution and what is its use. what is it basically made up of oral rehydration solution you might have sometime taken it yeah oral rehydration solution oral rehydration solution basically is composed of glucose and electrolytes remember i told you about electrolytes in the class In fact, you can prepare ORS at home also by just taking few tablespoons of sugar and salt, mix them in a clean water, and your ORS is ready. Especially ORS will be used when a person is suffering from diarrhea. Okay, na? It is especially given a person to a person suffering from diarrhea. Getting it? So ORS will basically include lots of sugar and salt in it. that here okay then do answer one more question to me that uh, explain to me how assimilation is different from absorption yes it's a normal question explain how assimilation is different from absorption we learned about absorption that it is the process of absorbing absorbing uh, the digested food the food that is now completely broken down into various simpler substances 
while assimilation was the process of carrying those absorbed food particles to the different cells of your body to different organs of the body via the blood vessels yeah yeah hasan yes sir that is what what assimilation was that absorption is when food basically is a uh, broken down into very simple substances and via like if you can recall this villi in the small intestine we did learned about villi they would be absorbing the food now there are blood capillaries present in your villi right now so absorption of food mainly occurs in the small intestine and villi absorbs it while assimilation assimilation is basically the absorbed food goes to the different cells tissues and organs of the body through that blood that is the difference between the two hope you guys are getting it all right now then do tell me that why we cannot uh, let uh, do tell me why we humans cannot digest cellulose like uh, herbivorous animals yes suleiman why we can't digest digest cellulose Am I not audible? Because uh, they are bacteria. No, no. Repeat, repeat again. Answer it again. Because they are bacteria on them. Well, it is not mainly related to bacteria. Sir, because uh, we lack are... uh, enzymes. Exactly, that is the main reason. We lack the right type of enzyme, like. the type of enzyme required to break down cellulose is cellulase let me write it over here cellulase sir i am coming okay okay so cellulase is required to break down cellulose and it is not present in our body so that is the reason why humans can't digest it the human guts do not also moments ago you were saying about bacteria also so that that is also true fatima that is also not very incorrect but the main reason is cellulose okay. also like in the case of cow or other cattle other uh, herbivores we learned that bacteria is also present in their uh, in their uh, gut now that yes. helps in digestion of cellulose so human gut also does not have the bacteria that helps in the digestion of cellulose well cat cattle have such bacteria we do not don't have the di cellulose digesting bacteria neither we have the uh, neither we have the cellulase enzyme so that is the main reason hope you guys are getting it okay if i ask you guys to define the process of digestion in amoeba will you guys be able to define it no, yeah, one sir. of you define the process of digestion in amoeba i was asking about how do you define the process of digestion in amoeba yes sir they digest their food in the vacuole digested yeah. food in the food in the vacuole digestion takes place if a question is asked a subjective question is asked so you would say that amoeba first of all does not have any specialized organ for uh, nutrition like we have mouth Huh? A butterfly has got a long proboscis. Different organ or animals have different organs to take in the food. Someone has mouth. Someone has a, a proboscis. Like no, but amoeba does not have a special organ for taking in their food. The entire process is carried out with the help of cirrhopodia to take in the food. Cirrhopodia helps in taking of the food. so as the food is taken up by the cirrhopodia then it goes into the food vacuole right the and in the food vacuole amoeba secretes digestive enzymes that digest the food particle that that digest the body of the prey and then it will absorb the absorb it and then uh, the food will travel to different part of the amoeba and finally whatever will be the whatever waste is left thereby it will be released from the body via addition 
spectrum. So amoeba does not have any specialized organ for nutrition. Entire process will be carried out with the help of pseudopodia, meaning that taking in food will be carried out by amoeba, uh, by pseudopodia. Also, they will engulf the whole food. It's not like they will chew it part by part, bit by bit. They will basically engulf the whole whole food. Right now. So ingestion will be done with the help of pseudopodia. Getting it? Ingestion will be done with the help of pseudopodia. Talking about digestion. Where will digestion take place? In the food vacuoles. Food vacuoles. In the food vacuoles, digestion will be taking place. Okay now. For the absorption. absorption in the absorption basically the food that has been broken down into this now the body of the amoeba will absorb it here. the process of absorption what will be happening the nutrients that it will be getting from the digested food the nutrients that it will be getting from the digested food are absorbed by the cytoplasm now the cytoplasm that is a jelly like structure it will be absorbing that nutrient getting it so absorption will be done by cytoplasm is that much clear now okay now furthermore talking about assimilation it's the process of basically obtaining that energy and distributing it to different part of the amoeba it will go to different part of the amoeba and in amoeba, the food that is absorbed, it will be used for producing energy that would be required to carry out different life processes. Finally, you have ejection. Ejection is the process of excretion of undigested food material. So here, basically, in this case, what will happen? Observe this, the last image here. It's like the cell membrane has ruptured. Observe this, the cell member membrane has ruptured meaning that it has broken and it has ruptured so ejection will take place by rupturing the cell membrane how it happens by rupturing the cell membrane waste is released i hope so far you guys are getting it is that clear Look at this question. Answer this question. All of you have to answer it. Where is this glucose solution? Others, what about you? Look at the option now, like option A, B, C, and D. From oh. there, you have to answer. Yes, Fatima, that is correct. No, uh, hold on for a minute. No, Fatima, that is not correct. So, like, uh, is it uh, my first answer is correct? Is it glucose solution? Okay, hold on for a minute. What about others, Suleiman and Hassan? What is the answer for the given question? Basically, which one? Not mustard oil, right? I think, no. but I think it's, but I think it's glucose solution and mustard oil. No, no. See, first of all, try to understand the question. The question says that there are some food items given over here. Which of the above will give a blue-black color when tested with iodine? 
upon doing the iodine test iodine test uh, what component what type of nutrient gives a blue black color you guys can recall about the starch test remember about the starch test like this was there in in class 7th standard also you must have studied about this you might have studied about this thing that uh, how do we test for the presence of the starch you take a sample of bread it or you take rice yeah I you can take rice that. also so basically there what happens you would take a food that will contain the starch in it like you have bread bread yes. contains starch yes sir right no potato contains starch rice contains yes. starch in it these are different type of carbohydrates no so it would be say it is b1 right exactly right now so boiled and mashed potato contains starch and slice of bread also right now so they will give a blue black color because iodine which is originally uh, in orange or uh, brownish color it will turn to blue black in color whenever it comes in contact with the starch so option b is the correct one for this answer okay question says which of the following pair of teeth differ in structure but are similar in function you have to answer in the chat box so remember you were you were answering it as question number b yeah you were answering it correct good hasan where are you neither you are speaking neither you have turned your camera on like it's on but it's basically dark i can't see you Uh, sir, could you recall what scanine? Yes. And could you recall what scan what scanine and molar and molar? When you look at the teeth, they are. I open my camera. Okay, your camera is on, but it's. Can anyone see Hasan? No, oh, sir. It's actually dark, uh, Hasan. Maybe there's some issue in that. Anyways, see. The first four teeth. When you look at the front, first four teeth, they are called as canines. I mean to say incisors. Then you look at the two teeth in the sideways of your mouth, right next to the incisor. They are canines and they are pointy. They are canines. So, so can I just like uh, I just guess the answer? So can I guess if it's correct? Have you sent the answer? Yeah. yeah. You haven't. I haven't got got your answer, Fatima. Yes. Uh, Sir, did you get writing, my answer? I'm just oh. sending. Uh, in which part is it? No, oh, Fatima, that isn't correct. Sir, did you get my answer? Yeah, your answer. That is that is correct. Okay, now, Hasan, what about you? You're also required to answer it. See, we yes, learned. Is Fatima continue? So, sir, my answer was incorrect. Right? Yeah, it's incorrect. Incisors and canines, they are their function is a bit different from each other. When we learned about the mouth, in this we learned about teeth, and we learned that teeth are having different shapes. Uh, talking about incisor, their function is to cut and bite the bite the food. Canines, they would be piercing and tearing the food. while premolars and molars their functions are common that is to basically grind the th grind the food okay na so i was going to write premolars and molars so that it can be okay okay no worries so for this one it is option number b also those of you who are remaining silent and not answering in the class so parents should be informed regarding this so everyone has to participate equally in the class question number 3 also today the class will last for 15 extra minutes okay 
Sabrina, you guys are available now. Yes. the correct combination of organs that do not carry out any digestive function. See, first of all, let's look at the first option. Huh? So, it's the it is? Sure it's the B1. It's the B1? Yeah. No, that isn't correct. Hassan, you have answered this one. Well, let me see. No, Hassan, that is not D. correct. D is also not correct. First of all, read the question. Question says, they are term, following terms given in the option. Which of the, which, which of the following set is the correct combination of organs that do not carry out any digestive function. Okay, now see. In your body, there are some organs, there are some parts of the alimentary canal which do not. Hassan, now you answer. Oh, still, it is not correct, Hassan. Where is it? Uh, uh, B1. Hold on for a minute. Just hold on for a minute. Neither B, neither C, neither D. The correct answer is actually option number D. Let me tell you why. If you Sir, I told about... you the B1. B? You told... No, I told you the B1. You told it's incorrect. I'm saying that B is also incorrect, C is also incorrect, D is also incorrect. The right answer for this question is actually option number A. Let us understand. First of all, you guys tell me that uh, we learned about rectum now. Basically, where the waste material is stored temporarily. Huh? What is the function of rectum? You guys know about the function of rectum? Basically, what does the rectum does? It basically, uh, look at this rectum over here. Rectum is basically their main or ma their primary function is to collect and hold the waste material, hold the whole kind of the poop until it's time to release it. So that is what the main function of rectum is. And it, it can stretch in order to accommodate more waste in it. So basically the primary function of rectum is to store the fecal matter, store the solid waste, store the uh, human poop. That is the primary function. Its size can increase or decrease depending upon the, uh, depending upon the waste it will uh, store. Right now? Also while the waste is stored in the rectum your body would be absorbing if there's any amount of remaining water or salts present in it so thereby it will be absorbed by the body the longer the poop remains in this rectum then it will solidify it will it, uh, the water more and more water will be absorbed from it and it hardens so in this given question like we know about esophagus esophagus their only function is to transport the food from the stomach but is it helping in the diet i mean to, is it carrying out any digestive function okay. does it break starch or does it break protein or fat in it uh, hasan suleiman and fatima why well, not it this time it does not it also does not break anything in the food huh? it does not carry out any digest, digestive function their main role is basically to what basically whatever water or um, uh, vitamins are present in it, it will be helping to absorb it. That's it. While it does not help in breakdown of anything, talking about large intestine, rectum moments ago we learned about it. But in the other three options, like in option B number B, buccal cavity talks about your mouth. In your mouth, the starch is partially digested now. Thereby, in option number B, one of them is carrying out digestive function. Thereby, option number B is not correct. Because what your question is asking, the question asks you, what is the correct combination of organs that do not carry out any digestive function? That's what you have to answer now. 
but in B one of them is carrying out in C also buccal cavity is again there it is carrying out digestive function in D a small intestine a small intestine is the main site in your body where com food is completely digested now hope all of you have understood question number 3 here yeah. Suleiman Hassan and Fatima Fatima you understood it Actually understood it or just nodding yes, just nodding to nodding. Suleiman yeah, and Hassan, you guys? Yes, sir. Next question. The swallowed foot moves downwards in the alimentary canal. Why does it happen? Is it because that force provided by the muscular tongue, a flow of water taken with the foot or gravitational pull? Or the contraction of muscles in the wall of foot pipe. Sir, I didn't understand the question. You didn't understand the question. The question basically says that the food that you are eating, it goes into the foot pipe. Is it happening due to the muscular tongue? Is it that your tongue pushes it backward and due to that only it goes down in the alimentary canal? Or is it because like along with some food you take in water also is it due to the flow of water taken with the foot that helps in movement of foot or is it due to the gravitational pull gravitational pull is a downward acting force right now like earth pulls everything towards its center wherever it is on earth it will be pulled towards the center of earth via a gravitational pull so is it because of that because if it was gravitational pull so if a person were to stand like this a person were to stand like this so then the food from the stomach should come out of its mouth now the food should come out of his mouth if it were to be gravitational pull getting it what i'm trying to say so if the answer may be the uh, first one but because the second one, not every time we drink water, right, while eating. Sometimes, exactly. after finish, sometimes after finishing our food, we'll go and eat. So maybe right. it would be the first one, yeah. The first one. First one? Yeah. No, that is actually not correct. So is of... it the contraction of muscles of the food side? Exactly. Didn't we learn about peristalsis yeah. movement? Yes, sir. Have a look at it again. Look at the given animation here. You learned about it. It's a series of yeah. wave like movement due to contraction of muscles in the digestive tract, mainly in the foot pipe. That helps in the downward movement of foot. No? Alone, water or your muscular tongue or gravitational pull that is not sufficient for the movement of food from your mouth to the uh, to the small intestine to the uh, stomach. Because if you were to look at it, many times we'd be taking bigger bites of food. Food, you take big bites of food also sometimes, and you see that sometimes you might have feel like kind of feels like the food is stuck into your esophagus. Does that ever happen? Like you have eaten lots of food and you ha don't have water and then it kind of you have a choking feeling like your neck is being choked. So at that so time... Can I uh, say the answer for the second one? Yeah, you can say it. Those of you who, are, who know the answer for second one, say it. It's the acid present in the stomach that kills the harmful bacteria that may enter along with the food. Exactly, that's correct. Who will tell me the another role of acid? And who will tell me what type of acid is secreted by the inner walls of your stomach? What kind of acid is secreted? Basically, what is the name of that acid? Uh, yeah, Suleiman, Hassan, Fatima. It's hydrochloric acid. Yeah. 
that is hydrochloric acid okay then do tell me apart from killing the harmful bacteria in the food as a fatima told me it's the correct answer but there's one more function performed by this so acid for digestion obviously for okay. digestion but remember what we learned in our in the class like in the your stomach hydrochloric acid is secreted okay mucus is secreted all right then pepsin is also secreted no but pepsin will not start to work unless the medium in your stomach becomes acidic so acid activates pepsin pepsin will work when acid is secreted is that clear now okay answer this question everyone have to answer in the chat box just write the option whether it be a b c or d no need to write the whole option sir could you explain me the question a finger like outgrowth of amoeba it is talking about pseudopodia this is amoeba this is the pseudopodia when you have answered it good but i am afraid sliman you have answered just now no but i am afraid it is not correct hasan you also have to answer it yeah hasan no that is again not correct see understand this these are also called as finger like projections finger like outgrowths are seen in the case of amoeba also and they are called as pseudopodia what is the role of pseudopodia to take in food in just the food but when you look at the small intestine villi is present in the small intestine the finger like projection called as villi this villi like structure present in your intestine we didn't we learned about this thing that that they are having blood capillaries in them very thin blood vessels called as blood capillaries and those blood capillaries absorbs the food now it absorbs the digested food so someone of you is answering that it absorbs the fatty food someone is answering something try to recall the concepts while you are answering a given question it absorbs the digested food a finger like so how does can see that answer no worries yes yeah, so now it is correct okay so it absorbs the digested food that is the main function all of you properly read this question take your time read it properly and then answer it no need to hurry Option number four ends here. Okay, no. Sir, what I remember, they don't have a very thin wall. So yes. I'm like, a, so I'm a bit confused about the answer. 
I will, I, I'm thinking it's A, but like now I'm thinking uh, it's gonna be. You first of all start by eliminating the option. Let's first yeah. look at every option given here. Okay. What yes, we learned. Mm -hmm. Continue. Part. So it may be like uh, the first one from what I'm thinking. But uh, yeah, A, A, A one. Option, option A number A. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let us ask others also. What about others? You have answered it as. Suleiman, you are answering it as C. Hassan, you are answering it as A. So for those of you who are answering as option number A, their answers are correct. Let us understand how. <clears throat> we learned that the inner walls of the small intestine have thousands of finger-like outgrowths called as villi. The singular of villi is called as villus. Anyways, that is similar. Anyways, villi so increases the yes. Because like uh, they, it can't be the B one because uh, they don't have small pores uh, pores through which food can easily pass. Obviously, it's not like they have a small pores through which food can easily pass. No, that's not how how that's the food stomata. is absorbed. That's a stomata, exactly. Right now, see the villi. We know that it increases the surface area of, of absorption for the digested food. And each villi has a network of thin, small blood vessels close to its surface. If you look at this, it has got the small blood vessels close to its surface. Getting it. Also, it, its walls are also very thin. Its walls are very thin. It's not like it has got very thick walls. Meaning that the tissue, this tissue is not very thick, it is thin. Surface of villi absorb the digested food. Absorb food via these blood vessels will transport to the different organs of the body, and there they would be used to build different complex substances such as protein that is required by your body. Now, in the question, the first option was seeing that the first option they have very thin walls. Yes, they have thin walls. That is correct. They have a network of thin and small blood vessels close to the surface. Yeah. So like have, sir, I was a bit confused for the first one, but then I remembered the image of the uh, like of the picture, then I remembered that they do have thin walls. Exactly. Like it's not like they are very thick like this. So try to understand it in different. Like these are the blood vessels and they are very thick. No. It's like this. This is not their walls are thin. Furthermore, they have a network of thin and small blood vessels close to its surface. These are the blood capillaries. The third option, no, there isn't any pore in it, and they are finger-like position. They are finger-like because they look like finger. Huh? That's why they call it finger-like position. They were option A is the correct answer for the given question. Hope you guys have understood it. Okay, we are going to continue for next 15 minutes also. Let us quickly understand this one also. The false feet of amoeba are used for answer in the class only, guys. Is it only movement or is it for capture of food and movement also? Actually, we have learned that it. The capture of food and movement. Capture the food and for movement also. Yeah. Pseudopodia helps the amoeba in movement also. Right now they form leg-like structure. They are the leg-like structures. False feet. We call pseudopodia basically means that pseudo means false. Podia refers to feet. So they develop false feet and that helps them to move. So capture food and movement also enzymes present in the saliva what do they do what do they uh, convert uh, star it's star uh, it starts into simplest uh, sugar exactly right now 
that's what happens okay remember this one we learned about it also sir could you uh, tell me what is cult i actually can't do uh, repeat again could you actually uh, recall me what's cult because okay. i kind of read it okay. others answer it in the chat box see while we were learning about ruminants now like cattle cows uh, they will learn that the food that they would be swallowing first of all will go into the first chamber of their stomach that is rumen and there the food will be partially digested uh, and that food which is partially